Hello everyone, it's been a while. It's been three days actually. Um, oh boy. <laughs> Do we have a lot to talk about? So uh, before I get into uh, our last three day update, um, which is chock full of information, uh, I just want to thank everyone once again. Our little channel has got 500,000 views. Is that amazing? Yes, thank you everyone. Amazing, 500,000 views. So consider subscribing because we're still running about 48% of you are subscribed and about 52% of you are not subscribed. So consider subscribing uh, because we're starting to pivot as you guys can recognize with our channel uh, from a real hardcore build channel uh, to more daily life, uh, the region, the area, the greater Dumaguete area, and some cultural uh, things as well. So we really want to bring you guys the real Philippines. So there's a lot of great channels out there that talk about uh, beaches and bikinis, right? <laughs> and uh, as Wilma knows, I love beaches and I love Wilma in a bikini. Sure. <laughs> 20 years ago, maybe? No, nah, she's been trying them on. <laughs> she brought a lot with her uh, in the Balak Bind boxes and we go swimming. I get a different bikini every day. <laughs> but uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of great information out there about the Philippines and, uh, you know, like I say, beaches and bikinis and uh, single life and guys coming over here and, and uh, making their way, navigating through the Philippines and, and finding someone and settling down. All great. Uh, that's not what our channel is about. We're about married life. Uh, and you guys know that I call it the 10 percenters. <laughs> it's kind of a coin phrase uh, that I created um, because basically you guys, the ones that reach out through email or just through comments, uh, they, you come up and visit uh, all in long-term marriages, uh, really looking to get out of the rat race uh, at, in your home country, uh, finding a piece of property here, uh, settling down, enjoying stress-free living of the Philippines. It's cheaper. Your money goes further here. Uh, so when I say 10 percenters, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, just average folks like uh, Wilma and I. So uh, we had, what, three more subscriber visits in the last four or five days? Yes. <laughs> wow. And two more scheduled later this week. So that's five <laughs> new week. subscriber visits in the last seven or eight days. <laughs> and we're getting visits, and we love them, from all over the world. Uh, Belgium, um, Ireland, UK, Australia, uh, Sweden, um, mm -hmm. just basically all over the world. Yes. Um, <laughs> So we, we enjoy it very much and uh, you know when you guys come up you guys tell us very similar stories. You're either visiting the Philippines, spending about a month, that's about the average, uh, looking for property because you're about to retire or you're here now, you've, you've moved, you've been here six months, maybe you've been here 11, 12 months and uh, you're watching YouTube channels like ours and saying, hey, we're gonna to go to Negros Oriental and check out the greater Dumaguete area because I'm seeing a lot of uh, YouTubers uh, talk about the area. So uh, a lot of you are coming in to this area um, and you reach out to us and that's how we're meeting uh, the 10 percenters. <laughs> so uh, you wanna talk about the last three days? Sure. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> oh boy. So uh, you know about the brownout. Uh, we did a video on that. So what happened was a few other things happened. <laughs> One, uh, someone down the mountain decided to build a bonfire. Around the electric pole. Around electric pole. Burned <laughs> down electric pole. Electric pole <laughs> fell over um, and melted the fiber line that uh, comes up to the mountain. So the entire barangay was out of Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi and power night before scheduled right. round out. Right, that so was Friday night. Friday night, <laughs> electric went out at 6 p.m. It was supposed to go out 6 a.m. So it went out 6 p.m. I look, I look at the time and I'm like, oh, I might have uh, misunderstood the email I got from a friend of ours. So I, I looked at the Noriko uh, information and it, no, it said Saturday, 6 a.m. But our power went out 6 p.m. So we don't know what happened. Well, that's what happened. 
someone decided to burn down an electric pole. Yeah. So we're out of power for 12 additional hours. So it was 24 hours. So um, we did the video and you guys seen the video that we posted. Uh, I guess we posted it on Sunday. Sunday morning, I think, the, yes. We posted it and it took two hours to upload because <laughs> we didn't have internet um, so because of the uh, melted line. So we had to go downtown and basically park on the national highway with about a gigabyte of one and it took two <laughs> hours to uh, upload. So it was a challenge, but we got it done. So I know every bit about of uh, down, downtown Dowen now because I had two hours to walk around while the uh, video was uh, uploading. Uh, but what happened at 6 p.m. when the power Saturday night come back on, our generator is on. They're usually very good about turning it on at 6 p.m. On time, yes. Yeah, and we know that. So what happened was we were watching a movie, generators running, we got our power on, you know, the refrigerators are on, we had one air con on. Uh, and I said, you know, it's 6 p.m., let me go check. No power. But I heard music behind us. So I said, oh, how do they have power? So I just take a walk around and 6 p.m., it's basically dark here, it's uh, dusk. They're, all their lights was on. So I'm like, wait a minute, they have power, we don't. <laughs> oh, that's not good. No. <laughs> so I told Wilma and uh, she was like, oh no, what happened? So we checked uh, on the caretaker and he goes, yeah, power back came right on at si uh, six o'clock. So not for Greg and Wilma. <laughs> so we didn't know what to do. So uh, we went out to the pole. We checked the circuit breaker. It's a hundred amp. It wasn't flipped. Uh, we have a transfer switch with the generator. Check that. Everything was fine. Checked our box, uh, electrical panel, everything. Nothing was tripped. So we're like, we just don't have power. So then we thought maybe it was something wrong with a transformer. Uh, so what we did was we waited out about two hours. So now we're talking about yeah. eight o'clock at night, pitch dark. And I said, uh, let's go downtown, try to get a signal and see if we can call Noriko if they have a, a hotline, a 24 hour hotline. So there is a tip. Um, when you move into your home, if you buy it, rent it, build it, know the electric company's hotline. hotline. <laughs> we didn't know what it was, so learn from our mistake. We went downtown, we Googled it, um, and we found a hotline number. We called it, of course, it was? Busy. <laughs> For about 15, 20 minutes. We yes. called multiple times, busy, busy, busy. We said, oh geez. Uh, I said, one more time, let's give it a try. So we called it, somebody picked up. <laughs> Uh, of course, they speak Messiah, so we had to have the conversation with the gentleman. We explained who we were, what barangay we were in, and that we didn't have power. And he goes, oh, sir, the power is uh, up there, but it's probably your fuse. And, I, and then me, being as naive as I was, I, I said to Wilma, all through translation, hey, we don't have fuses, we have circuit breaker. <laughs> we have a 100 amp circuit breaker. I checked it at the pole. I checked it at the house. Nothing's tripped. And he said to Wilma, and obviously Basaya, no sir, at the pole there is a fuse up by the transformer. Well, he knows that. I don't. I do, <laughs> I do now. We do now. Yeah, and maybe you didn't know as well. So there is a fuse at the top where every transformer is. So uh, they said, we'll be there in one hour. We have a team in Dowin, electric company, um, that'll be up in your barangay in an hour. So we told, gave them directions and uh, we came up here. Now we don't have service up here, so we couldn't communicate. So uh, I said, how are we gonna let them know we're, we're sitting in the dark on top of a hill? <laughs> you know we're you know, about 150 meters from the National Highway uh, you know, in our subdivision. We're gonna just have, just have to go out there with flashlights and try to uh, flash them down as they come up the mountain. Well, an hour later, there it come. Yep, they come up the mountain. So a woman was out there with the flashlight flash. <laughs> they uh, did their flashlight back. They came right up to us. So we were very, very pleased with Noriko. We are. So they come out, shined a light up on the pole and said, there you go, your fuse has blown. It was hanging. <laughs> it was hanging down. So uh, he looked at the um, transformer and said, oh, oh. no. You own that transformer. We're not supposed to work on that transformer. 
We don't service or we don't give a diffuse. Or right. Something. We don't hand out fuses yeah. and we don't service a transformer that's not owned by the electric company. This is owned by you. You have to go back to Polaris where you got it. Now, this is uh, Saturday night. Obviously, uh, now we're talking about 9, 930 at night, pitch dark. They're closed. They're closed on Sunday. So now we're talking about not getting electric to Monday morning. So uh, Wilma said, uh, is there anything you can do? And he says, well, I don't think I have a fuse, but let me go check uh, my box of uh, fuses and see if I can find the fuse for that transformer. So uh, I'm sitting there, the pessimistic Greg said, uh, he's just looking for a tip. Uh, and he went through his box and uh, said, oh, look, I do have a fuse, but um, ma'am, you're gonna have to pay 300 pesos for it because we don't, uh, own that transformer, you do. So I told Wilma uh, when we came um, up here from contacting them, I said, if they come up in the hour, like they said they were gonna come, and they get us operational, just give them a thousand pesos. That's like 20 bucks. It's worth it. Uh, plus it gets us known that uh, we're tippers in case we have future <laughs> problems, uh, they will come up right away. So Wilma already had two 500 peso notes on her. So, um, he said, ma'am, you gotta, you know, you're gonna have to pay 300 pesos. So uh, Wilma said, no problem. One minute later. They hook it up. Electric was on. Power's on. Power's on. So to me, it was uh, 300 pesos well spent. Yeah. So she handed him the two 500 peso notes, 1,000 pesos. And what did he say? Ma'am, that's too much. Yeah. I said, I know, but we really appreciate you guys coming up this late. And now we have the power, so... It was worth it. It was worth it. Yeah. So then uh, the optimistic Greg came back and I said, well, the guys weren't trying to just get a tip. They were really needed to replace the fuse uh, for 300 pesos. So he looked at us and said, uh, you know, when you own your own transformer, you're supposed to have your own uh, fuses handy. And I'm like, no one told us that. Or a backup. Yeah, yes. backup. I did not know that. Uh, no one told us. Yeah. So now we need to go to Polaris. Um, and buy a half a dozen of them at 300 pesos each and have them in stock here at the house. Yes. So if it happens again and they come up to put it on, we'll have the actual fuses. We just didn't know. So there's tip number two. Um, if you have your own transformer, uh, make sure you buy extra fuses that work with your transformer and have them handy. So when uh, you call the electric company and they say, you know, sir, we're not supposed to uh, service uh, because you own a transformer and uh, they may not even have that type of fuse on their truck. They just happen to have one. Um, you can just give it to them and uh, you'll be good to go. So we got our electric hooked up Saturday night. Let's call it 10 p.m. Yeah. So it was 24 and 4. So it was 28 hours of no power. And no internet. No internet. <laughs> Still no internet. So then... Uh, Sunday rolls around, no internet. So we contact uh, WMS. They did reach out to us in the text. Of course, we had to go down to Dowen, 10 minutes downtown. And they said, you know, we're closed on Sunday, but we'll, we'll come up on Monday. Well, come to find out, the melted line from the Friday night, uh, <laughs> burning of the pole, uh, that was the issue. So it had nothing to do with us. It was no. just that the main line, all of this barangay was out. Uh, and they got that fixed at 5 p.m. last night. So when I uh, finally got online, I had like 18 emails. I think I had 40 comments I was behind. <laughs> I was just like, oh man, I got a lot of work to do tonight. So I'm still catching up on emails. And uh, I did get all the comments um, taken care of. So that was our last three, three days. days. <laughs> Patience needed, guys. It's all good. Um, we had a real productive day on Monday. Uh, Wilma was really hit the garden hard. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, show you some of the updates from the last couple days. All right, update number one is uh, I was really looking for hardware and I could not find it here in Dumaguete uh, that had the barn look. I wanted, uh, I didn't want to put a traditional uh, just door handle on here that would look modern because, you know, we're really going with the, uh, the barn look. So on Shopee, uh, I found these handles 
and uh, they installed very very easy uh, really sturdy opens right up so we're happy about that I got two of them and uh, what do you think boss look nice it's perfect right yes yeah, perfect yes yeah, exactly what uh, we wanted and then here on the inside same thing and then look at the lock I got you can't get any more uh, farmer than this so same exact door we have it perfect I'm gonna shut the door Wilma so uh, you shut it plenty of space here this reaches out hooks no problem um, when you go to open it so you got to have a lock and we had some visitors say yeah you don't need a lock on the uh, door if it's shut people know nah we, we wanted a lock just so people feel uh, obviously uh, safe using our uh, spare bathroom and the same thing you see how you open it up and it hits the stop plenty from the uh, plenty space away from the wall so very very nice so this was uh, one of the projects that I knocked out uh, here over the last three days all right so take a look at the uh, ocean today can't even see it it's been uh, overcast uh, not really any rain uh, a little bit uh, a little sprinkle here and there, but nothing major. But this is perfect, perfect weather for gardening planting. and planting. And we've done quite a bit of it here in the last uh, couple days. But first, look at uh, some of Wilma's work. It's just starting, guys. It's just starting. So she really wants uh, to have a bunch of plants here uh, just for safety. Uh, we talk about railings. We're not doing railings. Um, it's, it's not the modern look. Um, we don't need railings. Maybe 10 years from now, 15 years from now, we might need something when I get a little older, uh, but we're not doing railings. But she does want to have uh, greenery around the front. So we haven't done anything with the pots yet because we're still negotiating. Uh, what's the name of those plants? Bagambilia. Bagambilia? Bagambilia. Bagambilia. I can't say it. So it's, uh, you guys seen them. It's uh, where they graft on the flowers, a different color of flowers. They're pretty expensive. Um, so we're going to get smaller ones. But we want to have ones that have the white flowers and the pink flowers and the red flowers uh, on the four pots that go in front of the house. Really bring in some nice uh, color to the area. Um, but then Wilma's starting to uh, plant and she bought a bunch of these. So this is going to be the color in front of the house. Very simple, um, large enough. You can see her handiwork. She put stone uh, to try to keep, uh, you know, the, the rainwater from uh, obviously knocking some of the dirt out. It's going to happen to some degree, but take a look. Starting to uh, take shape. So the beginning stages. But this wasn't really the work that you did. Look at this beautiful plant. It's beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? Very large, it's very nice. We have it under the two meter overhang because um, they said that this likes shade. So we're gonna try to give it uh, some shade. So let's take a walk down and uh, look at all your hard work in the garden. All right, so here's the boss. So uh, first of all, that is your fertilizer, right? Yes. So it looks like you used half a kilo. So there it is there. The 46-0-0 urea. You can see it, uh, it's like little pellets, granular. And uh, what we've done was we went around and did a tablespoon uh, around every single uh, fruit tree. And then uh, once we sprinkled it around it, we really gave it a lot of water and just allow that to, to go into the ground. So we'll see uh, how that uh, how that works out. But I think just with this black dirt, I think it's gonna, everything is gonna pop. But uh, Wilma made an executive decision. <laughs> uh, she said, 23 fruit trees you have here, Wilma? 23. 23 fruit trees. She goes, I wanna plant some vegetables. Yes. So, so we went out and got some seeds. So um, what is, what's in this row right here? Eggplant. Eggplant? Yeah. Is it the entire row? Entire row. All right. So you can see how uh, darker it is here. Uh, that's because she's out here watering it twice a day. Uh, what's in this row here? Okra. Okra. Wow, you're going to have a lot of okra. Yeah. All right. And then uh, we decided that we're going to go another row. Another row. So that'll be four. 
four rows of vegetables, and then another row here. So you got, what, two types of tomatoes you're going to try? Yeah, cherry tomato, then... Uh, the regular tomato? The regular, it's a big tomato. Okay. And bell pepper. Bell peppers. Yes. Bok choy, you said? Yeah, I have bok choy. Okay. And Chinese cabbage. Chinese cabbage. Yes. And then some kind of onion, you said, too, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. Onions, yeah. All right, so that's what we're going to plant. And then uh, we also uh, mixed in uh, these rows, and I did it here as well, where the plants are going to be, uh, some additional fertilizer, and then let it get into the ground uh, before uh, we start planting. So we got two rows done. So not bad, right? <laughs> so now we're going to have fruit trees in a couple years. And vegetables. In and like 60 days, right? Yes, yeah. That's, you can have it, I think it's just 60 days. About 60 days. Yeah. So we'll see how that uh, all pans out. And then I did mention on the last video that I was going to buy three more solar lights. Um, and I think I had them on site uh, last video. So I got them installed too. So uh, same light is over there the only difference is the bracket i bought the bigger bracket it's a thicker bracket um just to uh, extend out a little more uh these lights i'll tell you they're really good uh they come on at dusk um and then they stay on to dawn uh, we have it set on a low setting but still it gives light out like 10 15 feet so this whole area here is illuminated at night and then if there's any motion, it even has a motion detector, um, and uh, it'll kick on high if it uh, detects any motion. So uh, we have one in this corner. You know about the one in the uh, over by the gate. And then I don't know if you can see it or not. I'll try to do a quick zoom. Uh, one right there. And then up by the pool, one right there. So they work real good. Um, they're all operational last uh, couple nights and uh, we're happy uh, with uh, with that purchase so it looks like we're pivoting to not just fruit trees now vegetables, vegetables. and then you said something about uh, planting some plants in here too right yes flowers scattered, and plants yeah. scattered, scattered plants. because we still have all these beautiful plants you can see she's starting to pick ones she likes pulling them out get them in the brown pot and then get them up by the house scattered around uh you're also going to put some by the uh, pool right yes okay so uh more to come on that so my next project guys um and you know i keep going back and forth because uh we're an army of two right now right <laughs> army of two so we're picking and uh choosing what we do so one little project that i did in between helping them with the garden was uh, you guys know there's still some rock off the property and uh, I had a half a bag of cement left. And you can see, um, I don't know what a straight line is. So uh, this was kind of a high step, I think because the dirt settled a little bit. This was about 12 inches. These are about nine and a half going up, but this one was like 12. So I went ahead and uh, just did, uh, had only had a half a bag. So I just uh, did some cement here. Uh, goes down maybe uh, four inches. And it's not even the size of uh, the, the step itself. But you can see it's pretty good size. And here's my foot, enough to use. So I went ahead and did that. And then I just brought some stone around here because we're using this uh, more and more. So uh, the rest of the stone, which is out there, and it's a hell of a job of shoveling it and getting it all the way across and then up the driveway. Uh, but I do need more stone up top. So I'm going to be working on that. So uh, over the next couple days, um, we still have to do the carport, uh, sealing that. Uh, we're going to test uh, doing uh, some epoxy around the pool, which we're going with a dark gray. Uh, so uh, we got to pick up a gallon of that and test that out. I'm going with a different brand, um, the, the brand that was a little more expensive. But we're going to do right behind the water feature and then going down to the outside shower. So it's a small area. So that's going to be next. Uh, so that's going to be our next few days as well as uh, getting the rest of the uh, vegetables planted, right? That's right. All right. So stay tuned, guys.